Hey everybody, this is Joe Pro Decor, and today we're going to take another look at the Graco Ultra Handheld Airless Sprayer. Right, so here we have it. Like I said, it's the Graco Ultra Airless Handheld Sprayer. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, this airless is ex works exactly the same as the bigger pumps, like the GXFF. The GX21, the Graco 395, the 495, etc, etc. They're just on a bigger scale and they have bigger pumps. Now this has been stripped right back to probably the least they can get away with in a handheld unit. And it does have a place in the market, although I actually got about 40 litres of paint out of this pump before the pump failed on me. And that is basically down to the fact that I used it on a workshop. I used it in a full room. I was putting the pump under too much strain, too much pressure. This is not what these are designed for. They're simply touching up tools. So if I'm using this sprayer, my bigger sprayer, on a, on a full job, and then I need to do any touching up, or anything like that or I need to just do a small area rather than getting the bigger pump out and it's ideal so today is a perfect example I've got a load of fence panels uh, some over there as well and these areas on there that need a bit more of a spray coating on them like I say bits that have absorbed the paint a little bit too much this is perfect save me having to get the big machine out so, I'm just going to go through a, a few things with you. Now, I have already got another video on my channel, uh, which I will be putting on the end of this one, if you've not already seen it. And I do talk about the Graco. It's more of an introduction into the machine. And it was two years ago. I may have said a couple of things on that video, with my expectations being a bit higher at that point, although I did know it was for smaller jobs. I then went and used it on jobs that I shouldn't have. It's a common thing with these. You know, a lot of people have bought them and they've gone out and the pumps have they've been complaining. The pumps have been going after just a few uses. So I have a general rule of thumb with this sprayer now. If I'm going to use this sprayer and it uses more than one battery, which is about 20 minutes runtime maximum, if I go over that 20 minutes, I'm most likely using the sprayer for too long at a single time. I shouldn't be using it for 20 minutes. So if I'm doing a door, if I'm doing some detailed coving, architrave, or I'm doing a ceiling rose which would take forever to paint, this will do it in seconds. And it may need two or three coats, but in total, you're going to be much under that 20 minutes time. You shouldn't be using it. You change that battery, it's too long. That's my general rule of thumb now on this. So, more about the machine. Right, so we're just going to get this uh, sprayer ready for use. So it's got a little bit of water in it, because what I like to do, I just like to rinse it through at the very beginning, just to make sure that it is still firing. So, uh, prime the pump like so in the down position now that's not going to come out at the end because it's in prime so what we do is we just upside down for a few seconds get a bit of a shake and it's, and it's done and switch it back to spray position and then what we do is and normally take the spray, take the cap off and take the uh, tip out and just make sure that it sprays, which it does, I've already tested that. So now we've got the spray, the tip in position. And we've actually got an FFLP, which is a fine finish, low pressure tip, which is very important to have in this. And it's a 210 tip. So anybody that doesn't know anything about tip sizes, the two, uh, basically means it's a four inch tip so you double the size of that first number and the 10 which I've explained on a previous video is the size of the hole which lets the material out the paint out the size of the orifice and that's a number 10 
So um, obviously the bigger that number goes up, and it normally goes up in twos, um, odd numbers and even numbers, depending on whether it's the blue normal tips, the rack tips, or the green FFLP tips. This is actually a 210, so the next one up would be a 212. The one below that is a 208, etc, etc. So the fan on this is going to be 4 inches, roughly. That's all I'm going to need to do the bits that I need to do on the fence panel at the back and on the other side. So um, that's in place, that's nice and tight. So what we then do, it's in spray position, so we'll just do a bit of a test spray, make sure it's spraying, and I'll do that in the bucket, or you can do it on the grass, whichever. But we'll do it in the bucket. Okay. That's the unblock position. Give it a bit of a fire through first, then get it in spray mode. make sure it's spraying now I'm not going to run all the water through so I'm going to release release the air cap that's actually broke but it still goes on release the air cap twist it off make sure the filter is still in there Actually, it's a good job I checked. The filter's not actually in there. So we'll be in the back of the That's a fine filter. So the filter goes in there. Make sure the filter's not in the bottom of here, actually. Well, we can empty this water out anyway. This screws off. Like so. Now, what I've already done is... I've already put the paint through the paint nets. I've got a little video about these paint that's the great very useful and they can be washed afterwards the brilliant for uh, filtering the paint through so I've already done that so take that off just to make sure there's no bits in there that we don't want that can go in the water to clean it to rinse off and then empty the material into here like so now that's going to be plenty Now we can get this back on. Make sure that's sealed all the way around there. Try not to thread this, make sure it goes on straight. It is a little bit awkward, it doesn't always go on first time. It does take a bit of jigging about. nice and tight that's nice and tightly on so you want this when it's turned on to finish here so that's perfect as it is right so what we now have to do we need to release the pressure from this so we squeeze until it starts bubbling out or the paint starts spitting out of this bit here so, I'll put this on the floor, I'll squeeze. Now that's the point in which you can put that on. Keep the pressure on it. And then clip the cap on. Now there's no air escaping from that. It's pressurized. And what that means is you can actually use it upside down and at awkward angles rather than on some that don't have that when you do turn it upside down it loses its pressure these are great for that so battery on the pressure now let me just talk about this for one second now that filter that i've just put in is slightly finer than the black one that was in there originally but we're going to get away with that 
because although you don't normally need two thin emulsions in an airless sprayer, unlike HVLP or XVLP, but more so with the HVLPs, with this it, you can pretty thickish um, emulsions can be sprayed straight through it without thinning. With the case on this fence paint, it is quite a thin consistency anyway, so we are going to get away with that finer blue um, filter that we've got on there on this occasion. But if you're spraying emulsions or anything like that, please stick with the black one. Right, so we need to do a test run with this one now. So what I want to do is, I'll actually spray it back into this one because this is where the material came out of. Oh, sorry, prime first. So get it in prime. We've now got a prime. Getting the material sucked into the pump. And then the pump can supply the tip. So after that, stick it into spray. And it should spray okay now. Yeah. Just a few seconds, just to get rid of all that excess water that's still in there. There's not going to be a lot in there, trust me. Right, so that's good to go. We've got the right tip in. We've got it filtered through, etc, etc. I don't want to go on myself. Right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to get this set up. Now it'll take me two seconds. We're going to do a clever little camera close up to the machine so you can see it close up. We'll go from there. Right, so here we go, all set up. I'm going to show you how to spray. Doing this way now. Oh, just let me grab a guard. I'm going to need that for a couple of areas. Right, so let's start off. You can see the misses on there that I'm concentrating on. Very handy. Just need my mask in for that. Get over the other side. No, nope, perfectly fine on this side. Yep. What I can say is, 
is probably the settings probably on a little bit too high so I'll rank it down to about seven It's a little touch-up job. A few minutes, saves getting the big sprayer out. 